Welcome everyone to Trend Micro Talks. I am your host, Aaron Tomey, and today we're talking to Trend Micro Technical Advisor, David Atkins. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I am super awesome. I'm really happy to have you on the show, and I would love to just start with you sharing a bit about your role here at Trend Micro. Well, um, I have been with Trend for approximately eight years now, and uh, that means a couple things. Number one, means I know where all the bodies are buried at this point. Uh, number two, um, I've actually been with three different roles within the company. So um, I've had a view from different experiences and different sides of the company, including being a customer service manager, uh, what we call a sales engineer, and now a technical advisor. Uh, my current role, what I do is I take care of our very large enterprise accounts and make sure that they're, they're being stable and that they have the security platforms and protection that they need. Well, David, being at Trend Micro for that long and being in those uh, particular roles over the years, I'm sure you've seen tons of customer environments and implemented uh, Trend Micro's products in many more. So I would love to hear about some of the coolest use cases you've seen in the field for Trend Micro's products. Yeah, so I mean, we, we've definitely covered in the entire gambit of industry in terms of what you know, Trend actually does and how it actually operates in various environments, everything from manufacturing to hospitals, to banks, to school systems, you name it, it, it it's all there. Um, for me personally, my, my, my favorite experience, and this, isn't, this is not one of my favorite experiences for my customer, um, but it was one of the things that, that, that kind of showcases exactly what Trend is capable of doing. And uh, we have these appliances called deep discovery inspector boxes. And basically what they do is they monitor incoming and outbound traffic, uh, north, south, east, west, and they're looking at like a, a bunch of different technical factors. And what it does is it allows us the ability to see into things that companies wouldn't necessarily ordinarily be able to see in. So I'm all on site at this um, small hospital in the middle of nowhere and the state and name shall remain nameless, but um, we had, we had convinced them to put in one of these deep discovery inspector boxes. And the really cool thing about it was everything that we had looked at from, you know, their security perspective, everything looked fantastic. Um, everything that they were doing, they were very locked down. They had everything very, um, very tight in terms of what their overall security posture was. Uh, but we put this box in and it starts monitoring, like I said, all of that traffic going from one location to another. And being a hospital, they have all these different medical devices that they're that they're using, right? And those devices don't always have operating systems on them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But there's not a really easy way in order to actually monitor these devices for things that can be going wrong. So that's kind of what this product does is it actually goes through and it monitors that traffic and it sees what's going on inside of the environment itself. So we put it in, we stood it up for a couple of weeks and um, I'm monitoring it throughout the week, just kind of poking in, seeing what's going on. And I noticed that there are three or four different, uh, what we would call anomalous pieces of traffic. And they're all four going out like about once a week. Nothing, nothing terribly odd about that. It's just that the data that was being transferred on that line was a little bit suspicious and a little bit odd. So I call up the customer two weeks later and we're, we're going over our standard review. And we're looking at the, the components of these IP addresses and what they actually mean, right? Well, as an example, and there were actually four of these devices that were on their network, <clears throat> but those four devices were essentially transmitting data out to not only the sources that they were supposed to, but they were transmitting data out to nefarious sources as well, or bad guys. So an example, uh, one of them was an MRI machine. So this MRI machine, was set up so that it, it could report back to the manufacturer so it could go back and get the updates that it needed. It can come back and get like all the, the downloads that it needed to, to do the best MRI job that it possibly can do, right? But what they didn't realize is that that traffic, and forgive me, I can't think of a better word, but it was bifurcated off or divided off. There we go, divided. It was divided off into two different streams. And one of those streams was going directly to the manufacturer like it was supposed to. And the other stream was going to this third party source somewhere overseas that again, I'll leave it to your imagination on where that might be. But basically that stream of data had everything from customer information like name, uh, PCI information like their address, uh, their credit card numbers, their billing information, 
literally an absolute goldmine of everybody that had ever been inside of that MRI machine. So you're talking over the course of the last five years and how old this machine was, you're talking literally thousands of people that had been inside of this MRI. And all of that data had gone outbound and they had absolutely no idea whatsoever that it was there. So that's that to me is the the one thing that actually stands out in my mind that, uh, the most of what, what Train can actually do and what our products do and a use case for our customers. You can be as locked down as you want to be, but odds are you're still infected in some way, shape or form. And literally these things can go on for months without anybody ever knowing anything. And I think that's the really cool thing and the really cool use case for what our products can actually do and what they can bring to bear. And if you put that in with, with Vision One and what Vision One's capable of doing by tying in the rest of the data sources, then you see even more data and how that's all put together and brought together into one big picture for you. And I think that's a perfect use case for what Trend does and, and how we actually operate. Wow. That is that is a fascinating story, David. And as a consumer to think, okay, I'm I'm going into the hospital, I'm getting this MRI. The last thing that I would be thinking about was <laughs> whether this MRI machine was going to be transmitting my personal data to some kind of nefarious source, as you said. I mean, I feel like people are worried about scams or not scams, but they're worried about threats like that as a consumer in, you know, when they're shopping at a store, when they're u actively using their credit card. I would never, you know, turn it around and and I would never have guessed that example to to come up just from an MRI machine. Yeah, I mean, and, and there were other devices, like I said, that were on the network, but the MRI was the biggest one that was causing the most damage. But it, it can be anything, right? I mean, anywhere you can store data on a device, even if it's like, um, you know, an insulin pump. My, my grandmother has an insulin pump and that she uses all the time. And <clears throat> somehow or another, she gets phone calls that say, hey, your, your insulin pump you know, is about to expire, you need to, you know, send your credit card information to XYZ account immediately or else it's going to stop and terminate working. And the same sort of thing applies, right? Like you don't expect those sorts of devices to have that kind of data, but a lot of times they have more than you can actually recognize. And it's more than just a credit card, right? It's more about what your personal information is. It's what allows scammers to give you those, those crazy phone calls that say spam risk on it, right? That, that's exactly what, what was happening in this particular scenario. So I, I was glad that we were able to find it. I was glad that we were able to put a stop to it, but it's definitely a perfect use case for monitoring network traffic and seeing the overall bigger picture of, of what could potentially go wrong. David, thank you so much for sharing that experience with us. I think it comes with learnings, not only for organizations, but also just for the everyday consumer and thinking about where data is being stored and where it could possibly be shared. I really appreciate you coming and joining me on Trend Micro Talks. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Same to you. Thank you for having me.